Oh boy, I lost a bunch of people. Okay. Hey, Carrie. Sorry, did you hear me screaming? No. Uh, oh, okay, good. <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I'm four minutes early for a change. Uh, I saw it pop up and I was like, well, look at this. Look at him uh, early. Did y'all hear that? Just me? Yep. Yes. Being yeah. recorded. All right. So I'm going to share my screen here. I'm going to try and find um, my kitchen and bath rules, which I'm not plugged in. So Come on, Pappas. Jeez. I, I show up early. This is what happens when I get early. So, exactly. You, know, you need an extra few minutes when you're late. <laughs> need an extra extra. I always need a few minutes, and I did a Red Bull this afternoon just to make sure I was uh, on top of uh, things today because I was falling asleep earlier. Yep, me too. Driving me crazy. Uh, kitchens, kitchen and bath, kitchen guidelines. Thinking about it. Popping up. Now all this is, is in uh, uh, let's see. Awesome. Oh, that's right. I have uh, Okay. All right, let me come back to our meeting here. Uh, where did that go? Y'all seeing that? Yep. K kitchen guidelines? Yep. All right. All right, so this one's a, a complicated one. Oh, yay. Oh boy, it's going to be like that too, and y'all can't read that at all. Nope. Now we can. Everybody with me? Let me go one more. How about that? I can read it. Yeah. Yep. That's you good. see both both sides. Yes. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, the kind of in on the right, but it's still okay. I can oh, move you it. Can, you can. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm gonna have to hide the thumbnails for a little bit here. Okay, so um, I don't really talk about the kitchen and bath handicap accessibility guidelines. Um, they are included. I do talk about some of them, um, the ones that show up constantly, whether you're in commercial or residential, you would need to be aware of. But um, for the most part, I skip over those um, in this little thing. Now, this book is a, um, I guess, a, a quick guide to the kitchen and bath guidelines uh, from NKBA. So those who are working with NKBA. Oh, your, your volume cut out for some reason on that. Yeah. Denise says she needs you to let her in. Yeah, so what? Denise says she needs you to let her in. Denise says I need to let her Denise. in. Tell, Shan tell Shanice, no, she was late. I was early. <laughs> you were late. I was early. She's ignoring me. Where is that? Now, see, I lost that. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. All right. Um, so these are... Um, kind of the down and dirty guidelines okay so the first one for kitchens is going to be that you have to have a 32 inch clear opening 
And the 32 inch is basically the handicap accessibility to get a wheelchair through. Um, so in our day and age, we don't really put doors on kitchens like they did in the old days. So you probably aren't gonna see a lot of doors um, closing kitchens off. Now you might see a door going to the outside or a garage, but rarely you're, you're gonna find a door going into another room. Um, but if you had an opening, like I have an opening that goes in my kitchen to the dining room, that opening needs to be 32 clear. So the biggest thing to take away from this little picture here is you notice that 32 includes the door leaf, the door itself, because that can't open full. So therefore 32 has to be from the face of the door to the jam, okay? Now those jams have a little thin piece of wood that goes around it. That's a door stop. That's kind of what the door hits to kind of stop it from swinging the other way. So that 32 clear is from the face of the door stop to the door face. Does everybody understand what I'm talking about with that? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Um, the next thing here, um, that's accessibility stuff, is you can't have a door conflicting with another door. So this sounds all like common sense, um, but in when we get to bathrooms, because it's gonna be similar stuff, um, not only is it doors, but also drawers should not conflict. So you've got this thing here where the door hits the other door can be a problem. Does everybody kind of follow that? Yeah. Okay. Now, one of the things that we, you know, we talk about door interference here, but what we don't realize is that we could have door interference between appliances. So you want to make sure that you don't have that happening as well. So here with the dishwasher, you'd want to put the dishwasher on the, bless you, on the other side of the sink in order to eliminate that conflict. Does that make sense? Yes. Is that just because of handicap or just in general? In general. I okay. don't, don't want that to happen. Um, so my kitchen, uh, let me see how am I going to do this. Um, annotate. Uh, I don't know how good this is going to be, but I have this, um, you know, that's not going to work. Hold on. Let me, let me go to it. Uh, whiteboard for a minute. So in my kitchen, I've got So that's the wall and then it does some funky thing off to the to the corner and then the countertop does this and my dishwasher is right here and I have a door right there for the cabinet so these two conflict so that would be a no-no does that make sense to everybody mm -hmm. so is that is that didn't you have that newly designed I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> okay. Yes is the short answer to that. But when we did the kitchen, we didn't redesign the kitchen. We just replaced everything. Um, mostly because I've been in the house for 20 years and kind of already adapted. And that's the one thing you have, want to realize is that um, people adapt. So... Um, you want to make sure that, you know, you understand that, yeah, it's a pain in the butt, but they will, they will adapt to it. Bless you. Um, so the, so the, uh, the, let me just make sure I'm not missing anything here. Is so this, the, go ahead. Is this still, um, accessibility or is this any kitchen period at this point? Well, first off, these are guidelines. So. If you took a kitchen and tried to adhere to all of these, it would be one big massive room that wouldn't really 
function. So you try, you have to do trade-offs with which, with which guidelines you follow and don't follow. And it gets into actually understanding your clients and such. And I'm going to give some examples later on of a couple um, and whether they wanted to have kids or not. Um, so you kind of got to understand what your, what your clients are. So we had to make some trade-offs. So they're not rules, they're guidelines. Okay. So the next one here is what we call the work triangle. This is probably the most important um, guideline in the NKBA. Um, you do not want to go past 26 feet uh, with the work triangle, with no leg being more than nine feet long or less than four feet long. So what that means is the work triangle is going to be from the, the three areas of the kitchen, the, the prep, the storage, and the cook. So the, 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 the prep is the, the sink, the cooking is the stove or microwave um, in my case, and then the uh, refrigerator is the storage. Um, so the whole length of this triangle, linear feet, so you follow the perimeter of the triangle, from here to here can't be less than four or more than nine feet, and the total leg of all of them can't be more than 26 feet. Now, does that work? Uh, sometimes, yeah, but, uh, you know, again, you wanna try and keep it in that range. And that has to do with just people trying to carry heavy things or hot things or awkward things from one area to the other. You know, we've all pulled out a bowl from the refrigerator and for whatever reason, it's got some kind of liquid in it and it shifts and all of a sudden it's unbalanced and you're racing to get to the sink to make sure it doesn't spill all over the place. So that's kind of what we're trying to avoid. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you wind up with this scenario here and you can't really see, so I'm gonna try and draw with my handy dandy note thing here, is this triangle is going from here to here and then it goes up past the corner and then back, okay? You wanna avoid this condition, but if you have to have it, you can't have it more than 12 inches. So from here to here, that distance is 12 inches, okay? Now that 12 inches gets added to your uh, 26 inch triangle. So length, whatever that distance is, that distance plus the 12, and then that distance gets all added up and it can't be more than 26. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Oh, cancel. Any questions so far? No. Nope. Okay. So the fourth one here is separating work centers. So this, whoops. I really like my pen. Kind of like having a whiteboard. That right there is a full height wall oven. So is everybody familiar with what a wall oven looks like? Mm -hmm. and how they fit in the cabinet? Yes. Everybody good with that? I only heard one yes. 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 Okay. And, and the reason is, is because you have exhaust and heat and everything, mechanical equipment that has to go up through the cabinet to get out. So when you put a wall oven in there, you don't get to have the countertop, of the cabinet space above or anything like that. All right. So um, when you have that scenario, you don't wanna put the wall oven in that place because you're separating the cooking area from the prep area and you're eliminating that work countertop area. In a minute, we're gonna talk about landing areas between uh, for the stove and for the sink and for the refrigerator. Um, so what you would do is you would flip the two. So the stove goes here and the wall oven would go there. Does that make sense to everybody? Why? Yeah. 
I have a cabinet above my wall oven. I wonder if it's hollow though. Have you ever gone up there to see if it's hollow? No, I mean, I store pans in it. Above your oven? No, interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, Same they're, here. They're, they may be running the vent and stuff in the wall. So why, why can't you do the wall oven there, but you can do like the stove, uh, like you can switch the two. You can flip the two. So um, Tamara, your wall oven is a full height cabinet, correct? Goes all the way to the ceiling? Yeah, it's got, it's actually two ovens and I, I looked above it and I don't, when I opened the cabinet and it doesn't have like a ductwork, so I'm thinking it must be in the wall. Okay, um, but what it does is, and, and I guess I should just go ahead and, oops, hold on here. Let me clear all that first. Um, and I just realized my kitchen's kind of messed up. <laughs> You're going to realize that with a lot of, whoops. The whole triangle is screwed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that's just the way it works. Um, where am I at here? Share screen. Um, Google. So, come on. So Terry, yeah. See the, whoop, that, actually, this is a better one. See how that thing goes up? Mm -hmm. okay. So what winds up happening is you can't right here go this way with it. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking back at the kitchen and bath, whoops, that didn't work. you can't go this way with your cook prepping because the wall oven is blocking that. Does okay. that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's where, why they don't, they want you to flip the two so okay. that when your oven is here, or I mean your stove, then you have this extra area to work between the prep for the sink and the stove. Okay. God, I feel like I'm a football analyst. <laughs> kitchen right. and bath analyst. What's that? So a kitchen and bath analyst. I am. Actually, uh, when I was in school, the uh, founders of the NKBA were in my program. And huh. so they were just kicking it off and they were running all this, these tests and these guidelines. So we had a big kitchen lab and everything where they were doing all this stuff. And so they hit us with all of this crazy mess. So I've been part of the kitchen and bath for a very long time. And yeah, you're ancient. I am. But what I can say in all the kitchens I've designed and stuff, paying attention to these, <laughs> these guidelines, clients are much happier with the kitchens, even though they don't realize some of the things that you put in it. So if we if we didn't have this quarantine i would try and get us to go over to uh, a cabinet shop and that's a kitchen and bath showroom and we could ask this lecture and the, the bath lecture at the same time but we don't have that because we're quarantined okay. so i know it sucks everybody holding up with that yeah i know me too um so if you have a wall oven, this I would not do as well, even though they're saying you could do it um, because you, you, you're still impeding that work area from the stove. Because a lot of times we're going to put other pots or dishes or something in this area, and then we're going to wind up putting them in the sink. It's one of the things I love about my kitchen, and I hate my kitchen. So guideline six here is the work aisle. You want 42 inches clear if you've got a single cook. If you've got a multiple cooks, then you're gonna want 48 inches. 
because you're going to be bumping into each other all the time. Does that make sense with the islands and stuff? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, anybody have a, sh a, a short, a, a small thing? Because a lot of times I see 36 inches in the homoramas between the islands. And it gets oh. kind, of, kind of cumbersome to try and walk between. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. That 48 also works for the uh, wheelchair. Um, one of the guidelines that we will talk about with ADA is this diameter circle right here. So that's the wheelchair turnaround is 60 inches. Okay. Diameter. So that's what you need. Five feet to go across this way to um, circle the wheelchair. So you can get into a lot of that mess. Go away. So is that only if you're making it handicap accessible or just in, in general? No, that's handicap accessible. Okay. And also, when you get into handicap accessible, you have to lower your counters. And okay. you have to have this area right here, which is knee space for the wheelchair to pull up to. So you lose a lot of cabinets. And your toe kick goes from four inches to nine inches. So it becomes huge. You really, you wind up with useless cabinets. But if you're in a wheelchair, some space is better than none. Um, walkways. So when you have your traffic patterns and stuff, you need to have 36 inches clear. So what they're talking about is from the cabinet, that's 36 inches. Is everybody good with that? And that allows the traffic to go this way. My, my kitchen is open. I don't have that, but it's basically set up this way and it allows for, um, pretty good access to go from the dining area here to the entry area over here. Okay. Here. All right, so this is the, the, the confusing one is gonna be traffic at clearance areas for seating. So if, if you're dead ending, like this right here, then 32 inches with your chairs um, will get you there. Because the theory is, is that you're only going to have to move out of the way for this. And we've all were sat at, at uh, restaurants or something where there's a situation like this. And getting back in the back here is pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. um, hold on here. Shanice is coming back. We keep losing you, Shanice. Now, if you got a clearance here, then it's 36 inches, and that gives you your eye always, so you can clear through. So okay. what's the difference between 32 and 36? The wall? Yeah. That's the only difference. The theory is, is that a person usually takes up about 12 inches of space. So from okay. there to there, when we're sitting, is about 12 inches. So the theory is, is you got 24 inches to walk past. So a person sideways like that could kind of skimmy through. Whereas here, you can get to 32 because the odds are that these people are either A, already sitting, or it's not that big of a deal to get up to allow people to go. But if somebody was passing through all the time, that's where the problem comes in. Gotcha. And again, I don't necessarily agree with this. Um, I think this should be 36 all the time or 42. Because the more space you give people to walk, the better. That's my theory. Uh, 
trying to find the next one here. There it is. Seating clearances. So this is kind of crazy. If you've got eight inches at, for here for your bar area, then you can get away with 30 inch height. That, that makes sense because 18 inches is pretty small for putting plates but you could possibly do it because you have this wall here that's kind of coming up to meet the rest of the countertop like that. You don't, you have this drop. When you don't have that, when it's straight across like that, you can allow 15 inches. Okay. Yeah. Goes up. So the countertop is here and it rises up. I do not understand why they make it 12 inches. For me, when mine, when mine was actually 12, we made it 18. Because the same scenario with plates here that you do here. Because if that's 12 inches long, and that's the only place for your plate, where are you gonna put anything else? It's my theory. So I, but they say, if you're at a bar height, you can go with 12 inches. If you're at regular counter or regular um, countertop height, you can go to 15. And then if you're at regular table height, 30 inches, you go to 18. So this can impact your space requirements back, back here. Would that be more like in a, a small apartment? In terms of... Oh. The 12? Right. Because you see, I see those in small apartments and then the 18 in like bigger houses. Is I, that true or? No, I think they put the 12 in the apartments just because they, they don't have the space. Um, I don't think they're necessarily trying to adhere to the kitchen and bath guidelines. But from, I guess, a justification standpoint, yeah, that would be the case. Okay. Um, Aaron Graves, she's in, um, in the program as well. She actually does uh, senior apartment layouts. Mm -hmm. So she would, she would argue, yeah, that's why they do it. Okay. Would it be different in senior living? Would it be the full 18? For me, I would say yes. I would do the 18 wherever I can. Okay. Um, because the more space you give somebody to put plates and stuff on, the better it's going to be for them. Mm -hmm. That's just the bottom line. So if I had the room and I was trying to stick with this 42, like I did, I went to mm -hmm. 18 because it just makes sense. So the, the bottom line is, is if you feel like you need more space, then do it. It's just gonna be a whole lot easier. So for access here, one of the things, you gotta make sure that you're 27 inches to the underside of whatever the countertop is. So you notice it doesn't go to the countertop, bottom of the countertop, it goes to whatever is holding the countertop up, the brace. So that's to, be, to get the knees and everything underneath the uh, for the wheelchair, okay? Okay. So, if you're gonna have uh, one sink, you should have it located to the cooking surface. So this goes all the way back to the um, wall of it not being impeding on this whole kind of work area. You want to keep that as clean and as open as possible. Uh, when you get to accessibility, you'll, you'll, you're going to see this sink drawn quite a bit. But basically, the top of the sink can't be more than 34 inches. The apron or whatever can't be more than 27, and that goes back to this. And then the nine inches for the, the feet in the wheelchair. And um, you'll see that later. Okay, so cleanup and prep area and landing areas. So for at least 24 inches wide, so that's what we need. 
on one side of the sink and 18 on the other. So one side's 24, other side 18. When you have a dishwasher, you get the 24 automatically for the most part. You can't do anything else with that. So you just got to make sure you got 18 on the other side. Now, my sink is actually like this, and I don't have this 21 inches here before I start anything. I don't have the 15 to the center line. This gives you enough space to work in. Plus you get a 21 inch cabinet here, which you can actually use. Mine's a 12 inch, so it, it sucks. That makes sense to everybody? Yeah. yeah. Make sure I'm not missing anything here. So on the prep side there, basically now you're gonna have this 36 inch wide area so in addition to the 24, you're going to want to have another basically six inches on either side of that to work in for the kitchen area, for the sink. And that's at your primary work area because this is where you do most of your cutting, most of your washing, your setting of various items to place into the sink or into the pots and so on. And, uh, you know, sometimes when I use these, examples I feel kind of like an idiot because uh, most of you guys have cooked in kitchens and already know a lot of this but you've never had anybody actually point it out or whatever is this wait 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 stop scrolling where the guy is where the, what where is? the 24 and 16 scroll up a little more okay. yeah him. okay so is this the end of that 36, is that a wall right there? That can be anything. So this right here is just saying from here to here is 36. Countertops mm -hmm. can go on. There could be a wall here. You could change direction with your countertop. Lots of different things can happen. So as long as the 36 is there, whatever happens after that is whatever. Exactly. Okay, okay. Okay. So halfway through here, what? How are your kitchens looking to y'all? Scrappy. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, my it, dad remodeled ours, so. It, it is what it is. There's no way around it. Um, all right, kitchen guide thirteen here is you need thirty six inches from the dishwasher. They're showing to the sink, but it can be anywhere. Um, but you want, oh, I'm sorry, 36 inches from the sink, no more than um, to get to the dishwasher. And that makes sense. But a lot of times it's sitting in this base cabinet right here. Um, normally we would flip the dishwasher on these cabinets so that it's right next to the sink. Does anybody have a dishwasher that's not near the sink? No. That's what I thought. Now, if you shove the dishwasher on the other side where you got a countertop, you need that 21 inch um, minimum space. Part that I don't have, um, even though my dishwasher is on the other side. If your sink's in the corner, this is a really bad idea um, because this space is dead back here in the back behind the sink. Mm -hmm. um, they did it in the 90s quite a bit because they thought they were kind of putting the sink in what would be a dead area that's corner. But a lot of times people put an appliance here of some sort. So by doing this, this space becomes dead. You, it's hard to reach because it's like 36, 38 inches back. So it just gets clot cluttered up with a bunch of junk. <clears throat> or at least everyone I've ever been in, people put plants back here. Mm -hmm. yep. and, uh -huh. then, and then ants show up. And then, so don't put windows right there. Don't put windows. Don't put a sink in a corner like this. Got it. You're better off putting the sink right here and putting the dishwasher or putting the sink right here. Put the dishwasher there. Put the sink here and the dishwasher on the right hand side. Okay. Uh, 
Kitchen guideline 14 here, two waste receptacles, one for waste, one for recyclables, basically. Um, a lot of people like to put them in their cabinets. Uh, anybody got any thoughts on this? I used to have that in my old house. I and liked you, it. You liked it? Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay. Um, because it kept the trash can out of the way, right? Yeah. Problem is, is that um, and it kept the cat out of it, so. Okay, yeah, well, that, uh, or a dog, I can understand that. Yeah. Um, or two dogs. But uh, the problem with this dog. is that if, what? I said, speaking of dog. <laughs> just <laughs> dog. <laughs> My dog. Um, you can wind up with a lot of, like, uh, residual trash in this area, okay. and it really starts to, get kind of stinky. Um, I got a friend that they don't have the receptacle here. Obviously, if you have the receptacle that's set up for it, it's a little bit easier to manage because usually it's a double wall type thing. They just shove their trash can in there and it gets all nasty. So, yeah. Uh, it really stinks. Yeah. If you have an auxiliary sink, okay. Um, I usually just had my husband clean it out so you have your husband clean it out yeah, well ex-husband now but yeah <laughs> <You'll do that. laughs> well you know they're good for something exes <laughs> um, so if you have a have an auxiliary sink uh, this is usually like a uh, little bar sink or something in your your kitchen or um, an island sink where you might want to uh, cut vegetables or something you should have 18 inches or more on one side and three inch minimum. This allows you to put this thing to the edge of the countertop um, for the most part. Um, I don't know what you gain by not putting it in the center versus an edge. I guess if you've got islands that are pretty small and a lot of times going back to that 42 inch aisle space, islands can get pretty small. This becomes kind of a novelty to have. I wish I had a second sink in the kitchen. Any questions so far? Nope. It's pretty straightforward. I got to tell you. Um, it's just explaining some of this stuff sometimes helps. Um, refrigerator landing area, you usually need to have 16 inches wide, 15 inch depth. Um, I don't know why, I guess so you could put a toaster or something behind here. I don't know. Um, but uh, um, if you're going to put it on an island there, you want to make sure you're no more than uh, 48 inches across. Um, and again, it's, it's a landing thing. So um, if you have a, no, I'm not even going to say that. Um, if you've got one of these cabinet refrigerators, these are pretty cool. Um, you can, you have to have it on top. Let's see here. <clears throat> got, uh, did we get the cooking surface? Landing area for cooking surfaces. Uh, 12 inches on one side, 15 inches back, and 15 by 16. So you're seeing the same numbers showing up 15 16 that type of stuff um and that's basically standard stuff if you've got a cooktop instead of a range everybody know the difference between the two mm -hmm. the oven beneath it exactly um so the range has got the oven underneath it if you have just the cooktop you need 12 inches deep on the back side if you're going to put it in an island all right um, are you going to go over the drawer microwaves? I know they're pretty new, kind of, so. No, yes, no. Microwaves? Yeah. Did you not see it at Homerama? I didn't go to Homerama this oh. year. Um, Definitely better than last year, that's for sure. I didn't go last year. I went this year. Oh, you didn't miss anything last year. Oh. It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> um. Drawer yeah, microwave. they had the microwave in the drawer, like the refrigerator. 
Okay, so you roll out the drawer and there's a door that pops open? You roll out the drawer and the microwave is right there. Oh, I, I know what you're talking about. It was yeah. in the first house, I think. Uh, it was in the island and then it was a sink and then it was cabinets below and it's a microwave drawer. Is the microwave just in where the drawer was? I'll look it up. Uh, the face of the microwave is like the is drawer. like the drawer. You just yeah. pull it out. Pull the oh, paper. okay. Ah, okay. Uh, no, we don't go over those, but I can explain it. Okay. All right. So for those who are wondering what she's talking about, this is it right there. Um, the microwave itself is the drawer. And that's not a cabinet thing. That is a microwave thing. So the manufacturers are making microwaves instead of swinging, they're now pulling out. So you lay whatever it is in the thing, um, and then you can close it and start your microwave. So your count, your drawer, you lose two drawers here, or a, yeah, I guess two drawers, um, and it's 30 inches wide. Yeah. So it mounts into this There's cabinet. Like end of the islands for some reason. Yeah. Um, the mostly what. This is the new version of, um, uh, we're gonna get to microwaves at kid height, which is really what this is a takeoff on. Oops. Um, and that's coming up in a minute. Well, I don't wanna get you guys sick by scrolling so much. All right, so we'll come back to that in a minute, okay? All right, so cooking uh, surface clearances. If you have a, a oven or a range, I'm, I'm sorry, not an oven. If you have a cooktop or a range, you need 24 inches protected surface to the top. If you don't, for whatever reason, then you can go with 30. And this is so that fire can't get up in here and burn your cabinets. Um, I've seen couple of house fires start, I would never have an unprotected surface above my stove. So those of us who put microwaves in, take out the range hood, y'all know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And you stick it over the stove and you don't move your counter t your cabinets up, you're a violation of the code. Code requires 24 inches in Virginia. So is that just meaning for like the 24 inch protected surface thing, is that just talking about like the, the range hood and the microwaves or is there like some fire protection thing you can put on cabinets? And you would have to have some kind of metal there um, and the range, the, the uh, range hood is the uh, easiest way to accomplish that. Okay. Um, I don't know why you would not want a range hood because you get a light and a fan mm -hmm. from from the range hood. Not that the fan does a lot, but I mean, it <laughs> that's <do>. true. <laughs> What's that? I said that's true. The fan doesn't do a lot. Doesn't do a lot, but it does it does some. Um, but it's really there to protect the fire and stuff from going up. Right now we have uh, you can buy these. Uh, they're called fire pucks. They're basically metal canisters that attach to the range hood. And when the fire leaps up, it melts. And then it just deploys the fire suppression chemical. Um, but so we, anyway, so we have a range hood that has two, um, let's see if I can find it here has two filters on it. It's basically the whole underside is a filter. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. And 
So anyway, um, so you can see here, so the whole underside has got a filter. This might be it right here, actually. Yeah, there it is. See that guy right there? There's filters all the way underneath there. So we stuck the rain, the, the fire canisters underneath there, and the fire department said, nope, can't do it because the filter is blocking the range hood, I mean the fire puck. So we're like, okay, well, we're just going to screw some uh, bars in here, across here, and we'll just attach them to the bars. And the range hood manufacturer said, nope, you put a hole in that, we're going to violate our fire warranty. So now we get to pull out 70 of these and put in Singer filter ones. Let's see if you can, there's a good example right there. Um, so it pays to know what you're specifying before you uh, specify it. Fortunately, that th this is our example of it right there. All right. So anyway, so you want 30 inches from the surface if it's unprotected, 24 if, it, if you have a protected surface. A microwave or a range hood will give you your protected surface. Is everybody good with that? Yes. Code, code requires that you have to have a fan. So you got to be able to move at least 150 CFMs. That's cubic feet per minute. So you're basically moving 150 cubic feet of air every minute. That's why when you kick them on, they come on pretty high. Make sense to everybody? Yes. Everybody likes those uh, fancy snancy ones. Um, you know, that kind of hang down, they got the curve and all that. Um, the, uh, so if you're gonna do accessibility, this is one of the things that gets missed, is the range hood controls are usually on the range hood, which means you can't get to them if you're in a wheelchair. So you have to move the range controls down here. A lot of times you're building in some kind of switch control inside the, uh, in the face of the cabinet in order to uh, operate the light and the fan. Does that make sense to everybody? Maybe, no? Yes. Is it, are the switches in a drawer? No, they're, they're on the drawer. They're, they take out a drawer. Mm -hmm. And um, they just put a false front in, well, a full front and no drawer. And then they put the switches in there. Let me see. Uh, So they would be in this panel right here. Oh, okay. So just we use light switches right here, mm -hmm. and then they're able to. They've got two switches, one for the fan, and we wire the fan on high automatically. So in this case, the range is here. So this would be a drawer front with the switches on it. Mm -hmm. Wait, say that again. So the drawer front, you'd have a drawer front right here. Mm -hmm. Hang on here. Let me see if I can find a cabinet. Can you all see the kitchen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so in this drawer front right here, we would have two switches. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it would be like a false drawer. Correct. Okay. 
like a sink front. Mm -hmm. You know how it doesn't operate? And then mm -hmm. we just cut in two holes for the switches. Gotcha. <clears throat> okay. Uh, cooking surface safety. Never ever put curtains above a stove. Everybody good with that? Yeah. yeah. So I ran across a fire once and turned out that the lady had above her stove, she had put her little pot handle thingies, you know, things that protect like the mitten, oven mittens and all that. She put all that <laughs> stuff up there. So she's cooking bacon. Fire caught up there. Set those little towels on fire. And then quickly ran up into the attic and burned her house down. Do not wow. do this. <laughs> do, do not do this. Okay. I don't know why you would want to put a window in front of your stove. Excuse me. Most people put it in front of the sink. So the better location is the sink. Mm -hmm. So when you're re renovating kitchens, this is normally when this is going to happen. And it's because the client wants it more than anything else. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what if there's already a window in place? Like, would you put the glass block? What if they like the window? Would you just have them sign a disclosure or something or disclaimer? Or? Uh, no, I would just... Um, well, I, I would try and relocate the stove. Um, okay. If you can't relocate the stove, I think I, I, I would probably have them sign something saying that they're not going to put curtains over the stove because of fire. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, and then being an email or something like that, acknowledge, saying, hey, you acknowledge that you're not going to put window treatments over a stove because of the fire, potential of fire. And please respond to this as acknowledgement. Gotcha. Uh, because just because you put glass block there, doesn't mean they're not gonna put curtains in front of it. Right. So I don't, I don't agree with the glass block thing. The better solution is just to never put a stove in front of a window. I don't think I've ever seen one, to be honest, but maybe. I don't think I've ever seen one either. Um, yeah, I can't think of any. I'm sure they're out there somewhere. Oh yeah, they wouldn't have they wouldn't have brought it up if it wasn't. Okay, um, you should, regardless in your kitchens, you should specify a fire extinguisher. And you should make sure that that fire extinguisher is accessible and not near the stove or microwave. Why? It's flammable. No. Um, a lot of times, a lot of times, people put the fire extinguisher right here. Because you don't want to get close to the fire. You need the well, fire extinguisher away from the fire. Exactly. Your fire extinguisher should be away from the fire so you can access access that fire extinguisher. If you put it here or hang it on this counter, counter cabinet, you're not going to be able to get to it because the fire is going to be here. So it should always be somewhere other than there, but it should be in the kitchen. Side. Okay. Microwave oven. So here we are. We're going to circle back to Shanice's question. This is the way I usually see it, where they create an opening and they stick the microwave mm -hmm. in there. Now, when you do this, you got to have power back here. So there's going to be an outlet somewhere in this little cubby hole for the microwave. Like, like uh, Shanice showed, uh, showed us a minute ago, and I did not know they existed. These drawer microwaves, they're going to be at least 15 inches off the ground, which makes for a good, nice-sized drawer underneath the microwave for some big pots. So that's a good thing. Um, every time we do this lecture, some some of the students are for this and but most are against it because they don't want their kids mm -hmm. cooking mm -hmm. things in the microwaves so me it would be very hard for me to use this because yeah. i'm always bending over mm -hmm. uh, well I, I, I challenge people like the drawer microwave 
I yeah no I I would be okay with the drawer microwave right because I can set it in it I'm not okay with a door that opens oh yeah and I've got to lean over to put whatever it is in there like I said most of the people that you do this is for kids I don't really like the drawer though because like what if you have soup or something that can spill and you go to like shut that thing it's gonna spill everywhere I think it's on a soft close hinge uh, yeah, door glide system. Oh, okay. I don't think you can slam it like. Um, gotcha. So it's kid proof. Yeah, I opened it and it's very slow coming in, coming out and going back in. Yeah, I would, I would say it's probably spring loaded and or pneumatic loaded, or hydraulic in some capacity. Um, let's see here. Uh, Fifty-four inches should be where your controls are max. Um, ironically, mine meet this. Um, if you do accessibility, all controls have to be to the center line 48 inches. If you've got um, a landing area for a microwave, we've got our 15 by uh, wide by 16 deep. Same thing here. I use my stove as the landing area, which sucks because it's a glass top. So, one of these days, I'm going to drop something on it, and it's going to go. Correct. Did yours break? No. Oh, oh Carrie. Oh, Carrie. Yeah, Carrie. Okay. Best. I think there was something coming out of the microwave, and uh, something got stuck. I don't know. I don't remember what got stuck, and it went boom. But my father-in-law was nice enough to replace it for us. I hear, charging us. I hear the cooktops are about as expensive as the stove. When you they have are. I think it was like a thousand dollars or something. So That's what I, heard. I was kind of mortified when it happened and I was like, oh my <laughs> gosh, it's going to kill me. I didn't know you could break them. And then I yeah. had a client who broke hers. Oh yeah. She was like, yeah, it was like 900 bucks to fix. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's why you get warranties. That's what it, yeah, the stove cost. <laughs> The cooktop stove cost. I know. I would just have replaced the stove, but whatever. Well, they had, it was a brand new stove. The one that I like, I think it was maybe a year old or something. At, Luckily, my father in law was like really cool about it. He's like, it's okay. It's okay. And I'm like, Whoop. as long as, long as nobody was hurt. Would be. Um, oven landing area. Uh, again, the 15 by 16 and no more than 48 inches across. So that's pretty straightforward. We're all familiar with that. You can combine landing areas when you do. You want to use the longer of the two or add 12 inches to any landing area if you're going to combine them. What the heck was that? That was a notification on my ah. laptop. Okay. All right. Um, so. You want to make sure that you get those landing areas. If you're going to du double them up, which my kick, my sink and my stove share one, and it's in a corner area, so I gain, I do actually meet the 12 in my kitchen. So wh why would you do something like that? Like, can you just take being able to to uh, save some space? By having separate landing areas? No, normally your appliances are separate, so you don't wind up with separate landing areas. But if you need to put appliances together, if you will, then you're going to want to make sure that you add 12 inches to the 16 or the 15. So you got to have roughly uh, 27 inches of landing space for the particular um appliance gotcha. okay that makes sense so and cabinets come in two inch or three inch increments so 27 is a cabinet base cabinet so you'd be good with that uh let's see here countertop frontage uh just read that i'm not going to try and explain <laughs> sorry uh Total of 158 inches of countertop frontage, 24 inches deep, with at least 15 inches of clear 
clearance above is needed to accommodate all users. So what that means is 24 inches deep and a total frontage of 158. That's all that's saying. That's minimal. No sharp edges, that's probably self-explanatory. So you want to curve or bullnose these or chamfer them. So for storage, for a basically total shelf and drawer frontage, that's so basically you're going to do linear feet. For a small kitchen, you need a 300 inches of wall, 360. So you got a 12 inch wide cabinet and you have two shelves in there. You have 24, uh, I'm sorry, 36 inches of space. Everybody understand that? So you got, whoops, hold on here. I want that. So you have a wall cabinet that's 12 inches wide. You got two cabinet, two two shelves. Oh yeah. Twelve, twelve, and twelve. Twelve, twelve, and twelve. That gives you thirty-six inches mm -hmm. of frontage. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then three hundred and sixty for large. For base cabinets, you need five hundred and twenty shelf for base cabinets. Drawers. 360. Y'all getting the, the gist of this little graphic? So this is talking about uh, square footage. No. no. Uh, wait a minute. Is it square or is it linear? No, it's linear. So 300 linear feet. What you want to take away from that is, is you get to count your shelves. That's mm -hmm. the takeaway. Does that make sense? Yes. So you have three, uh, no, never mind. There's, there's the graph. Can you explain what frontage means? The front of the countertop or cabinet? Is like the available space or the front it would um from the like from the back to the front right that's where your granite goes right don't you count footage or frontage this is frontage right here yeah okay not square feet frontage mm -hmm. so it's the it's the linear or perimeter but not you don't do the depth okay so this is frontage for wall but notice you've got one two three frontage does that make sense see the three shell or four shells in this cabinet one two three four see that mm -hmm. is that a tv above the micro Yep. Wow. Not even a flat screen. I know, right? <laughs> what the heck? This is an old kitchen. You can tell by the bar stools. And the colors. Yeah, and the colors. Yeah. Wow. Y'all are way basement. more in tune than me. Let me guess. You guys like this stuff. No. No. Hey, no. that is ugly. All right. How about that? <laughs> okay, that one's nice. Ah, clean. <laughs> Anybody like French? Farmhouse? No? Cottage? I like the farmhouse. Oh, yeah, I like the cottage. There. That's a sub zero refrigerator. That's a five or six thousand dollar refrigerator right there. Yeah. Oh, maybe more because they got the, the warmer, the wall oven. They got, wow, they got all kinds of stuff. This is a nice kitchen. Y'all, yeah, how much do you think you job. spend on a kitchen? Uh, at least 60000 Uh, Yeah, that's about right to start with. It never ends. But you get your most bang for the buck. 
in the kitchen. So in other words, it was at some point it was like 83 cents for every dollar you spent, you get it back. I don't know if that's still it, but that was it like last year or the year before. Yeah. At Depends. one point, at one point when everybody was renovating back in that right before the, the crash, you were getting a dollar five to a dollar ten. So renovating your kitchen, you brought more money than what you spent. <clears throat> Storage and prep sink. We already talked about those corners. Ah, the corner cabinet. Y'all familiar with this guy? Yeah, the lazy Susan. Lazy Susan. Yeah. How many people? Ah, uh, do I want to say it that way? I'm not a big fan of lazy Susan. I'm gonna say it that way. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of it either. Me either. No, because it falls back there. And yeah, it's there. that is pre So you got this cabinet for those who are wondering what we're talking about here. And what winds up happening, so here's a corner thing, and you got this little corner cabinet there, and you got this circular thing. The problem is, is when, when you rotate stuff, stuff gets falls back behind here, and you can yep. never get to it. And as with any, it, in tide water, it's not a question of, when you're going to get uh, not a question of if you're going to get ants, it's a question of when. Yeah. So why bring them into the equation at all? Why give them a reason to come in? They're going to come in anyway. Don't give them any reason to stay. That's my, my theory. It's good theory, Pappas. I know. A lot of people have a hard time with it. My mom wants one so bad, and I keep telling her, don't do yeah. it. Uh, and then the door breaks, and then you get your fingers pinched in there. Yeah. And that's what I try and tell her. I said, "Look, you're better off putting a light in here, and just putting crap that you don't use in the back. Yep. It's a whole lot better than trying to get back there to get whatever thing. Oh, they're so cute! Ah, shut up. <laughs> I told her. I said, "Box of pancake mix." I said, "You whatever." You want to put it in, knock yourself out, pay somebody to put it in because I'm not doing it. And pay somebody to clean it too. Yeah. Yeah, because that would be me. I'd be <laughs> the one cleaning it. All that money I spent on your education, you could have told me not to put that in there. <laughs> That's what I would have heard. So now I hear the, I can't believe I spent all that money on your education and you wouldn't let me put in a lazy Susan. I'd rather hear that than the, I've got ants, I've got mice. And all that money in your education. So. <laughs> Mom and dad, you know. Uh, kitchens, we already talked about. They have to be GFI, CFI. I'm sorry, GFI or GFCIs. Because um, it has to be for wet. Uh, lighting. Um, I'm big on three types of lighting. So you have a general light. And that can be sunlight. Um, but you usually, you wind up putting some general light in the ceiling. And then you're going to have task lighting, and that's basically your under cabinet lights, so that you wind up with, there's, if, where's, where is the lady standing at the counter? Boy, she was way back there. There she is. So, if you've got a light here, you're shining there so that there's no way for her shadow to be on the work surface. If you're relying on the, only that light, then her shadow is going to get cast on the countertop. So that's why you want to do at least overhead lighting and task lighting. Now, I'm a big proponent on making the overhead lightings dimmable so that you can control the lighting in the, in the room. Um, I put cabinet lighting underneath the toe kicks to provide night light in the space. So lots of different ways you can do it. Some people like to put it above, across the top and shine upward. Lots of different ways to create that accent lighting or ambience. Ambience, sorry. Make sense to everybody? Yes. All right. Um, any questions on this? No. Pretty straightforward. 
Um, is this in um, Canvas? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. As it, will this lecture. With, I've been recording it, I think. Yeah, it looks like it. It's with, um, there's like four videos or something, and the link to this is at the bottom. So yep. Thank you. Yep. I All do have is, a question. I do have ahead. a question about um, about the legend on the electrical plane whenever we have time to circle to it. Okay, go ahead. Um, so oh, wait, hold on, hold on, Jill. Anybody got any questions on kitchens? Okay. All right. So those who don't want to hang out for kitchen, I mean, for electrical questions, have a good night. Those who want to hang out, knock yourselves out. Oh, okay. and is everything? Go ahead. Um, now, do you have to do when I'm doing my legend? Does the um, like the pictures need to be the same size as? Um, as the ones that you're doing, like my ceiling fan is kind of big. It's a lot bigger than the other items. No, so because this, there's a company called Big Ass Fans who makes some really big ass fans. Okay. And um, yeah, you wouldn't be able to. The symbol should represent, it can be smaller. I can make it smaller so that it looks proportioned. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that was my only thing. And, and okay. like those in, in the legend, um, it's one eighth for the size of um, of the symbol as well as the writing, or should the um, a little bit yeah. larger? Yep. Yeah. No, one eighth for both. For both. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Unless you're downsizing the symbol for some reason or another. <clears throat> okay. Gotcha. Okay. So both the writing and the symbol one eighth. Yeah. Yep. That's that's the last thing I have to do, um, and I sent you the pictures on that. Okay. So I do, is the, is the legend due tonight by midnight or do you, or do we have extra time for that? For what legend on? Um, electrical plan. Well, you're going to turn the electrical plan and the legend in together. They should be on the same sheet. Right. Yes, they are. Yeah, just turn them in together. Is that tonight by midnight? That was the plan. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll go work I, on it. I think people have been kind of slowly submitting things whatever way they can. So, and like, I, like I've been telling everybody, the college is asking us to be very lenient with submissions. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so then I could turn that in next time. I turn in everything else. You can, you can turn in, in any time. You don't have to wait till Monday. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, okay. So whenever you're done with it, the sooner the better. Um, okay. I've got the first round of uh, furniture plans I'll be grading. And, okay. Uh, electrical to right together. So. Okay, perfect. So the legend, even um, even though, like I think, um, some of the symbols work out to be like a quarter inch because of like um, that, uh, like with the duplex symbol. For the templates like and stuff. Uh, well, no, because like the duplex, the little circle thing is like an eighth inch, and then that little. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's fine. Okay, so it's okay if it's like a quarter inch or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, when you bring it off the wall and you get that little extension to the wall and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so it's okay if it's that same size in the legend, or should I shrink it down? You can do either. Okay. Okay. Yeah. As long as, long as it's consistent. It okay. Exactly. And then for the um, the three way connection for like the um, like the the stairs having the lighting in the stairway, um, how would I show the connection from the light switch upstairs to the one downstairs and vice versa, or do you just not? No, nah, I'll show you. Okay. <clears throat> So on one plan, the stairs, this is going up. And you got the switch here and the light would just say. And that's a three-way. So you'd show that. And then downstairs, you'd have the switch oops, and the three-way and the light. And then you would show it like that. 
and they're it's the electrician's responsibility to coordinate those so I mean, you would show that not we, by two lights and all of that mess wait say it again it would be the electrician's responsibility not to buy two lights okay so you don't have to necessarily show that like it's connecting to an like to a switch downstairs or upstairs or vice versa well that's what we did we got first floor and second floor where we're showing that some electrical engineers they only show one symbol <clears throat> and then they show the switch and then on the other one they'll show the switch and they'll say two stair light here does that make sense yeah i think so so you got on your second floor or your first floor you'd have this scenario and then on the other one, you would have this scenario. Oh, with the three. So on one one side of the plan, you would like annotate that it's two. I just forgot what I was saying. So that's up. Uh huh. And you got a switch, three way, and the light. Mm -hmm. Boom first floor okay mm -hmm. on the second floor you'd have a switch three-way and then you would say two stair light gotcha. okay. that makes sense yeah that way you don't double click. Some electric electrical guys do it this way. The other guys, they just put the other symbol in and they just let the electrician make the, make the call. Okay. So can you do it either way? E either. I would accept it either way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Because, because it's accepted both ways. Okay. Okay. Huh? I have a dimension question. Go ahead. So, because it's been so long since we did that one plan, when we're doing the dimension lines, I know the spacing and all that, but when we're actually writing like 32 feet or whatever, right? we kind of erase the little spot in the middle of that line or write it on top of that line? Write it on either. top of the line. Top of it. Okay. Yeah, so. And we don't need to do all four sides. Correct. If, if that measurement is already somewhere else on the that's correct okay so let's just say that's a window and we have a wall here and then we have an overall so you you would put your dimension here like 32 feet zero inches what you wouldn't do is this. Oh, stop. Ooh. You wouldn't do that. Okay. Yeah. Now, I do have a few more questions on the electrical plan, if that's okay. Yeah, that's what, that's what we're here um, for. So, are we putting, like, the doorbell and, like, outdoor lighting on as well? No. Okay. Um, and then, is, are, is it okay if we mark, like, if we're trying to, um, uh, like, say... I'm putting a light switch or like an outlet um, in the kitchen, um, but I also want like a like a light over a cap or over countertop or something. But where that light would go would kind of overlap the outlet on the plan. Are we allowed to overlap them, or like how would we go about that? That's always a question. So. If I understand you correctly, you've got your wall and you've got your countertop and your overhead cabinets mm -hmm. and you have an outlet here that's GFI 
-hmm. and 48. And then you're trying to put a light right here. Yeah. In the way of each other. Um, what usually happens is, is they take the duplex and they shove it into the wall a little bit so it doesn't get in interfere with the light. Okay. Or they'll take and they'll use a very thin line to represent the light. And then in the legend, they would show that that way rather than showing it as a full tube or a bar of sorts. Okay. Either way. Um, I'm, I'm good with either or. Okay. I mean, and then are we supposed to put the home runs on the legend as well? No. No, everybody knows those are home runs. Okay. Where, the, where the issue gets into in electrical plants is when you have a door area and let's say a wall and you've got five or six switches here yeah so what winds up happening is is they just go into the door with them okay just to make them fit because if they turned it onto the wall then the electrician's going to put them on this wall where they know when they're all here they got to fit in this area right here okay is there a limit right there so how many switches you could put in that panel? Well, that's going to, uh, the most I've seen is six. I think our college has eight switches. But it's commercial, so. Right. But you, it, would, it would be the same because okay. they're just switches. Um, I've only seen in the store six. Okay. But like I said, you I think you can get those wall plates with up to eight. Now they make wall plates that you can add together. So you can have as many as you want. Um, but I've never seen these. I've never seen these in play. I've seen this. I think, like I said, in the college, I think it, it, there's eight. Where you see this a lot is in auditoriums. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, where there's just so many lights or restaurants. Um, but but you could, if you had eight light switches for whatever reason, um, you could do that. We did a, uh, did a house for a lady at the North End once, and she wanted one of those candles in every window. Oh, yeah, you told us this story. And so we had to put a switched outlet under each window. So, and she wanted them to be controlled all at the door. So we had, I think it was eight switches controlling the eight windows in the front of her house. And then we had another eight switch bank controlling the eight windows in the back of her house. So she had to turn them all on at one time, but it was in one spot. It may have been in her closet now that I think about it upstairs. Anyway, but you get the gist of it. Okay, next one. For the smoke detectors, um, kind of like a two-part question. Can they go on the wall? I don't think I've ever seen them on the wall, but. No, they can go on the wall. Okay. You can so have them on the wall. If it goes on the wall, would we draw like that eighth inch line or? Yeah. Okay. And, yep. but if we aren't doing it on the wall, do we need to annotate like 96 inches or anything like that? Yeah, you're going to want to tell them that because otherwise they're going to be, I just know electricians. They'll say, gonna... oh, I put it on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and they, they do it to be funny, especially yeah. this one electrician I know. Okay. Because he's an idiot. He literally is an idiot. I mean, he, he's the guy who put the electrical panels in the closet first and then raised the question. Why are there <laughs> electrical panels in the closet? He's an idiot. He wanted the change order. So he just he screwed us out of like $16,000 per building. So, yeah, he's an idiot. I don't like him at all. 
My last question, is there like a special format for like putting the date on the paper on, yeah. or on our drawings? No, you mean like May or zero five zero yeah. whatever. Yeah. Okay, just whatever. The, the only the only the only thing I would say for this year would be is to put twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. Because if you put twenty down, then somebody could add twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two and change the date of your thing. But that's a contractual thing, not a not a school thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Yep. Anybody else? Thanks. Pretty straightforward. All right. Uh, next time, I guess we'll see each other on Saturday for those who want to show up. All right. Questions. All right. I'll you an email. Yep. The emails Wait, it is. Do we, do we have an assignment for this this week on, um, other than the dimensioning plan? No. No. I'm, I'm trying to get you guys caught up. Next okay. week, I'm going to explain because bathrooms are a little bit quicker. Okay. And I'm going to explain how to do kitchen elevations next week. Okay. Okay. So, cool. Yeah, I'm just kind of giving you a little bit of a break. Thank you. Um, okay. okay. Thank you. I'm trying to help out. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, guys. Be right. safe out there. Bye. Wash your hands lots. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.